So let me just tell you what's going on here. Um, we have, going through this, a smooth shaft. Now you can see that the original shaft has like this little uh, metal washer that has um, it has like teeth that point that way no they point that way so once you hammer this plastic or yeah this plastic red thing on it doesn't come off again that's a wrap so I don't have washers like that so I was like how can I make this side you know have its red thing so to speak so I, I was closing my eyes and thinking what's the best way and I came up with it I'm just gonna put some cloth with tape around this and then cloth with tape around a metal washer and then sew the two pieces together just like I do with the robot bones by combining tape onto something with cloth double stick tape they become very solidly connected and then you use stitches to connect the two so that's how I'm gonna make my mechanical connection with stitches I know that sounds super weird but it's literally the best way to do it believe it or not okay also I noticed that this is off that's unacceptable so I'm gonna move it over that's my first order of business um, so we got some work ahead of us but uh I think we should be able to do it pretty fast. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, that looks fine. All right. So, we're going to need the vacuum chamber, I think. Yeah. Well, I could try to carve this with a knife. Nah, we'll use a drill. We'll drill it out. I have nice grinding bits. Um you know, I'm not going to bother with the vacuum chamber, actually. I think it'll be faster just to, just to get the vacuum close to it. It should catch enough of the dust, I think. Well, I always hate getting the vacuum chamber down, but heck with it. We'll get it down. Ugh, shoot. Check out my new grinding bits, guys. They're like... Close window. Stop listening. They're like Viking clubs. They're supposed to not clog. When you grind like fine powders, they don't clog up. It's great. Can't wait to try them. I know they're going to work great. They're so coarse, there's actual spikes. It'll chew through my material in a second.
Alright guys, so I'm going to try putting this super glue activator into a surgical syringe. Because I, I want to just apply precision droplets of it. I'm looking to build up the bottom of this hole by about a millimeter or so. We're going to do it with super glue and activator. Guys, I just had an idea. I'm going to use the dust from the fiberglass shavings that we just sanded. I'm going to scoop that onto our uh, glue. Okay, that failed. Let me try something else. Let me try to mix the dust and It failed because the vacuum is so powerful, it's sucking the dust toward the vacuum. That's how strong this vacuum chamber is. I'm just going to mix super glue with dust. Actually, I don't know if this will work. Well, i got to try it. I know you can mix super glue with baby powder. I mean, it seems like any powder would be fine. I'm just seeing if this is a little faster. We want it to be like a peanut butter consistency. I don't know if the high surface area will cause it to cure too fast. Cool. Oh my god! That worked? Uh, wow.
was kind of cool. I'll, I'll do it again. It worked. It creates a little blob of material that pretty much instantly cures. One drop of glue. <laughs> That's neat. So, now we'll just build up the normal way. I just thought that'd be a shortcut, and it was. Super glue and activator. Man, that's a great way to apply activator with a surgical syringe. Wow. 10 out of 10. So you can see that I made this whole round again. More or less round. Uh, we can shave it away a little with the X-Acto knife. Or with our grinding bit on our drill, but... Very cool. That went well. So we have perfected now the angle of our shaft. You can see it's much more centered. It's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now we can put our wagon wheel in. Okay. Now, this is where the magic happens. How do we connect, how do we stop this so it doesn't just pop out? I thought about just putting a glob of epoxy on here or something like that, but I came up with something way better. Um, let me, you know what, we'll get the vacuum shut off and do them all at once. I gotta treat these like an assembly line. So this this wheel hinge is done. Let's try to modify all four. Then we'll do all four of the next step. That way we'll have, I don't know, less mucking about. I'd rather get all the wheels lined up perfectly right away. This one's already dead on. Oh uh, no, epoxying anything to it is weak. Epoxy won't stick well enough. Not for something like that. You want a mechanical connection. Now I thought of drilling and tapping it, but I was like, man, I, I would spend all day trying to drill and tap this. I was gonna drill a hole down the center of this, tap it, and then screw a bolt into it with a washer. But that, when I came up with such a faster way, I'm just gonna um, 
wrap fabric around it? Let me get the vacuum out so I can talk. So, I'm going to wrap fabric around this metal shaft. Uh, no, first I'm going to I'm going to co connect double stick tape to 1000 denier nylon upholstery fabric. I'm going to connect 3M 300 LSE low surface energy adhesive transfer tape to 1000 denier nylon fabric and wrap that around this shaft. And then I'm going to do the same wrapping it around a washer. So I'll have a fabric coated shaft and a fabric coated washer. I can line up the washer and then sew the the washer to the fabric of the shaft. So it will be sewn together with 100% um, nylon upholstery thread, which has about 30 pounds of tensile strength before it snaps. And if we put in like five or six stitches, that's 30 times six, that's 180 pounds of tensile strength preventing it from ripping off of this shaft. 180 pounds of force have to be pressed outward like that. That will just not happen. So it will not fail. And that's so much easier than drilling and tapping. All I have to do is just a little bit of tape. And the tape won't fail either. I mean, because it would have to actually drag its way completely off the shaft. There's no way. Uh, that tape is super strong. So, yeah. I, I find myself using double stick tape and sewing techniques for everything. It just never fails to deliver. It's not going to be that strong, but I think it's much easier. Just simple tools to me. Heck yeah. Who needs a bearing? I just like how tape and fabric and sewing materials are just like dirt cheap. Nobody has to buy a drilling and tapping kit if I use that technique. They can follow along. Same with fabricating this thing. I fabricated it out of hot glue, fiberglass, and glue, and some poster, poster board, which is basically just thin cardboard. Or you could use cardstock. So, yeah, I'm showing fabrication techniques that are just cheap and accessible.
I'm just deburring this thing a little bit. It's got a lot of little burrs. Okay, that's good enough. I think I got most of the burrs out. Oh, never mind. Dang it.
here. This is a pain in the butt. I didn't expect to be. Doing all this deep burying work. Thought we already had all the, these parts finalized. These are in my closet ready to go. I must have just got impatient and said they were done good enough. Because I, I've i gone through periods where I've wanted this tent done yesterday. I must have just been like, yo, let's just build it rough and rugged, not like worried about detail, but at the end of the day, I don't like to do things too low quality standards. I think it's funny that I'm always using sewing and tape and cloth where everyone else would use metal working. It's just... I'm finding that my techniques for the robot apply to everything. Beautiful. Apparently, Taylor equals mechanical engineer. <laughs> Is Taylor a nice tight outfit for the bolt, and you don't need a nut. Okay. I just had an idea to make it even easier.
need to drill this thing out a little more. Oh, gosh. I don't have snap rings or e clips or circle loops, but I do have tape and fabric. I didn't. I don't even know what those are. I, I didn't know the names of those. So it's like you can only do what you can with the knowledge you have and the tools you have. Because I thought of drilling and tapping it, and then putting a bolt through it. But it doesn't actually matter how you do it as long as you figure out uh, the fastest way to do it with the tools you have. And it, it doesn't even have to be the most fast. It can be just fast-ish. And it can also be something that's just more satisfying to you personally. most satisfying way can be the best way. I think it's pretty satisfying to do everything using the same material choice. Okay, so I wanted to drill out this thing. Threaded the pin? That, that would take forever to find the proper threading mechanism and get out cutting oil and a tap and die set oh. and find a matching bolt like this is going to be way faster I think oh, I have the vacuum ready but it's not on Let's see if that will work. What in the heck? No way, it's not working. Oh my goodness. That surprises me a lot.
Wow. I don't get it. Yeah, I'm supposed to be widening the hole, but it's not working. Takes away the hand fatigue, so I can sit here relaxing doing this. Oh, this thing's every bit as good as I imagined. Imagine the how badass it'd be though with the die grinder speed. Like at eight times the speed, it would just shoot through, through things all the faster. But this is still really great. Imagine just sculpting stones like this. Plan B, I'm just going to weld on a nut. I'm using welding. F this. This could be done in a second. I don't have time to mess around with this. This, uh, this was unacceptable. If the hole weren't so tightly bored and the plastic were easier to shave or something, all of this would be fine. But because it's so tight, because the plastic's impossible to shave, because I can't add the width of the fabric to it, my whole idea just fell apart. And also, I realized as I think about it, welding is going to be fast and it'll hold. It'll be strong enough. Because it's not really a load bearing joint. If I had my TIG welder, that'd be even better, but I'm just going to use my flux wire welder. So now it's just clean up in preparation. Alright guys, it was not successful. <laughs> uh, well, not yet. Not completely. Here's what we got so far. You can see that it kind of melted the fiberglass and made the hole bigger. Also, we only put two blobs of weld. We gotta keep going. But I gotta shield the fiberglass to protect it. Uh, so it doesn't melt like that. So I'm going to throw down some aluminum tape. That will solve that right away. And we'll be good. We just got to shield it a little bit. Actually, it started on fire several times. And I should wear a gas mask, too. I was breathing in epoxy on fire, which I imagine would be... <laughs> probably one of the worst things in the world. That you plan to breathe in wasn't bad enough the normal fumes imagine on fire so it's coming along we're getting it just a, a little more to go we'll be fine Almost there, boys. 
Almost there. So, we managed to put some welding bead down on all four, 
Um, we're going to need to tighten up carefully the fiberglass openings. To do that, I'm going to actually just push them down and put epoxy on fiberglass cloth and then just shove it in and just get it all lined up just right. Um, but before we do that, we have to thoroughly clean all the charcoal from the burning of the fiberglass and epoxy that happened on account of the welding. So to do that I'm probably going to use a fiberglass scrubber brush which is like a little pen that uh, is great for scrubbing. Here it is. It's kind of like um, a little hard bristle brush that you can just get in there and rub, 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 rub. And it comes out like um, chapstick. You twist the bottom and it comes out, or like deodorant. So it's a really cool tool. They use it to clean uh, printed circuit boards that have corrosion on them. So anyways, um, I'm going to use that to scrub away all the soot. Let me show you guys what I mean by soot. Um, we actually had these wheels start on fire while welding the axles in. So this side of the axle had a special one-way washer on it that once you pound it on it doesn't come back off. I don't know what you'd call that kind of washer, but that's ideal to attach these axles on. But I didn't have that washer and I don't even know what it's called, so I just welded a bead of uh, crap. It needs to be cleaned up. This was using a flux wire welder, so it's very dirty, but it needs to be cleaned up. You can see there's plenty of weld everywhere, but you can also see the holes are too big here, so I'm just going to get uh, fiberglass and epoxy and just shove it in real tight and snug every which angle after cleaning thoroughly all this. So I have to scrub it thoroughly with isopropyl alcohol and the scraper brush, clean it all up really good, and then shove in new fiberglass and epoxy, snugging this all up. And I'll be testing the wheels to make sure they turn okay. Uh, this one's turning like garbage, what the heck? Oh, it's just a bunch of crap coming out of it. I don't know what's up with this wheel. I mean, it turns. That's fine. You know, it turns. It's not stopped. It's just not smooth, like a bearing type of thing, you know. I think uh, it might turn easier with time, you know. Because it's just plastic, and I think it got kind of melted up and gummed up. But with time, it will, like, smooth out just from rolling a lot over the years. So it's just kind of rough right now. But yeah, this one's, you know, it's going to be fine. So yeah, that's the plan. We just got to clean everything up a little bit. It's not going to be that big of a deal. But, um, well, you can see what I'm making. I'm making wheels. And 
these wheels, we got four of them, will be part of my automotive pop-up tent. And you can see the design for that right here. If it can focus, there we go. So you can see the four wheels on the bottom, and you can see the car, you can see the frame and the dark lines, you can see all the little pegs, you can see the measurements, and uh, electrical feed coming in. So yeah, that, that tent, like a, a little canopy on wheels, will cover my car and I can work in it. I'm going to have heating and air conditioning in it and it's going to be well lit. And I'll be able to work year round in the driveway um, on my car with air conditioning and heating. And the town can't get on me like, oh, you need a permit to build a garage. I'm not building a garage. Oh, you can't legally put up a pop-up tent because it's not code and it looks bad for the neighborhood. It's not a pop-up tent. It is a wheeled mobile mechanic tent and because it's mobile on wheels it doesn't fit the description of a permanent structure of any sort. You don't need a permit to get it done and there's no limitations on it. it it's not a vehicle even though it's on four wheels and it's not a garage even though it has tools inside it and you use it as a garage. It doesn't fit any standard definitions and so there's no rule against it. It's it's the perfect loophole. The law authorities won't know what to do. If they say, hey, you can't put up that permanent structure automotive tent, I'll say it's not a permanent structure and I'll wheel it back into the garage. Um, it's collapsible so it will be able to have its height reduced and its four sides come in so that it's the size of a golf bag. Well, bigger than that, but you get the idea. Um, and I can roll it right into the garage and put it away. When I want to use it, I can roll it back out and extend it and raise the height up and set up all my tools in it and go to work. So it's going to be amazing. Um, I refused to do any more car work until I had it. I tried to go the route of getting a permit and building a garage or a shed or a pop-up tent. I've tried everything. And it all failed. All of my efforts into that failed. For one reason or another. Either uh, it cost too much or it take me so long. Like, for example, if I were to build a garage, I might be able to build it up to code. But um, I need to get a building permit and then it'd take me, you guys know how slow I work, it would take me to build a garage like seven years, just a little here, a little there, an hour or two a month. I, I work so slow on so many projects, I have so much going on, that it would take me forever to build something so substantial. And it's not like I can drop everything and just do that full time. This is my hobby time in addition to all my other work. I just could not get that done in a time frame that would be acceptable for any party involved. And so it's just not practical at all. So yeah, my plan was to do a lot more work today. But, uh, I ran out of steam, and that whole going outside in the freezing cold garage and, and shivering and lighting my foot on fire almost, and breathing in fumes and having to run inside to get a gas mask, and just everything I endured to get those welds done was a heck of a lot more energy and struggle and suffering than I ever intended to get involved with today. I tried to avoid a lot of suffering. And I suffered, man. And it was not fun. I was freezing. I was breathing in 
um, epoxy fumes that were on fire. So the epoxy started on fire and the fumes are going right into my face. I was trying to pat that out. Um, eventually I figured out that the fire is unavoidable. Every time you start welding right near the epoxy and fiberglass, it starts on fire. So I kept a bottle of water and I would weld for a little while and then pour, it up, pour water on it. Then weld for a while, pour water on it. It was a mess. And the grounding clamp had really nowhere to go except on the axle itself. So I had to put it vertically on the axle and then hold the other hand to weld. And I had to weld left-handed because my right arm is de... It's out of commission. And that's because... Uh... of my shoulder rotator cuff injury that I'm still recovering from. So that was getting, you know, a rough treatment and I had to use that arm to some extent more than I would have liked and now it's hurting me. And, uh, just everything was tough about it. Um, but I got through it and I did a good job and I won't have to do any more welding. And... The next step will be just cleaning up, just doing a bunch of fiberglass and epoxy work and clean up. And then that'll be officially done and assembling the wheels step will be done. I didn't get it done this time. This was a lot more difficult than I guess I really, well, I had one method to do it in my mind. I didn't like how that was working out because it was too hard to draw out the wheels shaft and there was no room to fit any cloth inside there. So, just the way I had figured out in my mind to do it didn't work out. And this welding idea worked out great, but it was just a lot of work. And now I'm just tired from all that hard work. Oh, and by the way, um, heat shielding the fiberglass and epoxy failed. I tried Kapton tape, and I tried aluminum foil. Aluminum foil, they both melted instantly. Um, I mean, the aluminum foil got disintegrated. The welds are just so hot. I, I guess, what is it, 3,000 degrees or something? Just anything within reach just it instantly turns to ash. So there was no protecting it. Actually, uh, maybe high heat fiberglass could have worked. If I bought some high heat fiberglass tape, maybe that would have actually protected it. That's kind of what they use. Um, around electrical wiring that's going to be near a light bulb. That stuff, you can hold a lighter to it, it doesn't start on fire. But this is 3,000 degrees, maybe even that would get incinerated, who knows. I mean, this is ridiculously hot. All the stuff that's supposed to handle heat probably would still start on fire. Um, so, we put, we put the beads of weld where we wanted it to. And so that was a win. Man, I gotta change. Some plastic shards went up my shirt and they, they're itching and hurting my forearms. So, and then it was dark. It was dark in the garage. The fumes of the fire and the smoke and the epoxy burning and stuff were just getting through my gas mask which I did not like at all and I I just didn't have the time or patience freezing out there in the garage it's freezing out there and I'm in shorts and flip flops and I just want to get this done quick so I didn't bother to set up a fan to blow the fumes away from me but I did actually eventually open up the garage at least to air it out and that helped a lot but um, yeah I didn't follow all the proper safety protocol because Number one, I didn't know I was going to have so many fumes. Number two, I thought I could just quickly do three tack welds, and it was just a lot more work than I thought. And the welding was slow, and I had to try it multiple times. My gas mask was so big, I couldn't close my welding helmet, so it was like only partially closed. So I had to look down and look up through it, and because of the angles, it was like deflecting the light weird, and I couldn't see very clearly, and everything was blurry, and I was having a hard time seeing. And it it was just a mess the whole thing it was just an absolute mess and I had poor lighting the garage is not well lit and I didn't have the time or patience to set up a work light so it was just tough
but I got through it. All four wheels, I finished all the welding. So the next session I do, I can just set up my comfy little vacuum chamber and tediously carefully clean it all up really nice and then tediously carefully refiber glass all around the holes and get everything centered up perfectly and then it's going to be perfect and then we can move on to the next step but this step still has a lot more work to do another another solid session or half session I would say three or four hours of work um, won't be a big deal I mean we can definitely get it done in another session but yeah anyways uh, this was a success today was a success I would not say that we failed in any way but um, it took a lot out of me so I'm not gonna go as long as I was I was supposed to work another two hours so I'm cutting out a little early because it was a lot more exhausting work than I really bargained for and one thing I've learned is that if you're planning to work five hours on something and the work is extremely fatiguing and, and challenging and physically exhausting then the five hours doesn't apply that that would only apply if the work were easy work if the works really really hard you don't have to do the full five hours you can stop early otherwise you're gonna be very sore the next day blah 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 I don't want to deal with all that crap I wanna feel good tomorrow so yeah I'm just calling it quits while I'm still ahead and still have my sanity and we'll come back in after another I don't know <laughs> it's gonna be a good week before I get to work on that again so I'll probably put away everything I took out tomorrow but for now I just have to change my shirt clean up a little bit put on a new shirt and then watch Gold Rush and I'm gonna make dinner too so I have to save energy for that kind of stuff too if you just work yourself to utter exhaustion you're not gonna have the energy to even make dinner you have to make dinner like I still have to take care of myself my needs as well so anyways yeah I'm saving a little bit of strength for that 